Hello and welcome to this video on BTC Software's accounts production for accountants and specifically for those of you who already use BTC Software but only use the tax modules. So in today's presentation and demonstration we're going to investigate why uh, you should upgrade to accounts production um, so that you can use the full facilities of the solution suite. So we're going to be looking at the reasons um, why our accounts production is going to be advantageous for you as opposed to using third party. And we're also going to look at the integration that the software provides as well with your existing modules at BTC Software. So we introduced accounts production in 2014. So it was uh, out of the solution suite. It was our newest uh, kind of module that we integrated with uh, the existing packages which were practice management self-assessment and the tax modules which would all be modules that you're using currently we have around um or well, it's quite uh, specific there but 1559 businesses which are accountants in practice and accountants in industry meaning that 83 percent of all btc software license holders are utilizing the accounts production alongside the tax modules now here's a couple of features or a few features uh, for the accounts production you've got the two-way integration with BTC software tax whether that be uh, the partnership the corporation tax individual tax returns you've got two-way external bookkeeping integration which we're going to take a look at in the demonstration You've got a incomplete records functionality, uh, which is kind of a, a mini bookkeeping package. If you're used to uh, manually keying figures directly in, um, if you've got bank receipts, if you've got uh, those payments and receipts, you can log those directly into BTC software and then export that into an extended trial balance. And if you work on spreadsheets, if your clients work on spreadsheets um, and aren't on bookkeeping packages, then we do have an import option as well so that you're able to import your spreadsheet via a CSV into accounts production. It does include multiple templates with the ability to create your own. Um, so we include uh, advanced templates like charities. You've got the sole trader templates and partnerships. And you do have the ability to create your own. So if you want to customize our existing templates, as an option to clone one of our existing templates, for example, an FRS 102, and then make all the changes that you want to, whether that be changes to the notes of the accounts, it might be changes to descriptors, or even something uh, simple like font or sizing. Now we're gonna have a look at a demonstration of uh, the tax and accounts. And I have put tax and accounts there. I appreciate that you are already using uh, the tax modules. But for the demonstration, I'm going to show you the integration with the tax module. So specifically, we're going to be looking at the year and accounts and how it integrates with um, corporation tax is the example that we're going to be using today. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tab out my presentation. I'm going to open up the software at the bottom. And we're going to continue right on to the solution center and start by logging in. Now, as you know, and I appreciate you will be using uh, the tax modules and some of you will be using practice management already. So I'm not going to touch on to detail on uh, any of the practice management features. And I'm assuming that you will be fairly uh, familiar with the software at this point. And there are a lot of tabs to go over up at the top here, um, most of which I won't touch on. If you are interested in practice management and you don't actually use practice management, you might just use uh, self-assessment and corporation tax products together. Um, then do check out our YouTube channel where we've got pre-recorded webinars and short uh, showcase style videos which covers all of the practice management functionality. Now as you'll know there's two views within the software you've got the individual view which is the one that we're looking at here and then we've got the organizational view. So we're going to close down the individual view for now because we're looking at a limited company and I'm going to select the limited company that I want to use from this right hand side which is going to be that one there Smith Software of Hammersmith. Now I'm only going to go over these tabs here that are actually going to be relevant for uh, opening up the accounts and working on a set of uh, limited company accounts. The first one, the obvious one being the details tab, which is going to hold the majority of the standing client data. Now a useful tool if you haven't seen this already is the company's house search. And this is where you can search for a company name or a company number. So I can pop in here, for example, BTC software, and then I can populate the information held within company's house for any of those companies that are registered. So the details tab is our first mandatory tab in order to um, start working on the year and accounts. 
The second mandatory tab that we do have is the contact details tab, which is going to be the address. Now, if we've used a, uh, if we've done a data migration for you, if you've recently moved across from us from different software, then obviously you'll have the addresses in there. Um, you can use the company's house search, which we've just seen, and that will bring across the registered address. But to add an address, which I'm sure you have done at this point, it's nice and simple. You can choose the add option and then you can pop the address straight in. So we've got the details tab, which is going to hold the majority of the standing client data. And we've got the addresses. Now, the final point before we actually move on to the year and accounts, and this is really important, is to have an associated individual. Now, this is uh, mandatory. You will need to have at least one associated individual. In this case, I've got a number of directors that are associated with my limited company. But you would have to have at least one uh, director, partner, whoever's going to be signing off the accounts to be associated under this associated individuals tab. And that person will then appear from the drop down, which we'll see later on when you're assigning that person to be uh, signing off the officer signing reports and balance sheets. Now, the way that you associate an individual is really, really nice and simple. Firstly, you just have to have the individual associate or the individual created within the individual view, and then you can associate them under the tab. So you just choose the add option, select the role of the individual, it might be a director in this case. And then the second drop down there is just going to give you a list of that individual view. So that's nice and simple. So they're really only the three details that we need is the, the standing client data, the address, and then assign an associated individual. Now, just as we do with the tax returns, we go to the exact same tab that you've been using day to day, which is the task tax. And you can see that last option is accounts production returns. So this is all familiar. And then we're going to choose the add option. Now, what I'm going to do just to start afresh is I'm just going to delete uh, the year in accounts and the corporation tax return that I've got here so that we can start from the beginning. And then we can jump straight into a set of your own accounts. Now you can see here, I've got a prior year, which I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be rolling forward from this prior year here. So I've got a year in accounts from the, the date is 16 to 17. And I'm going to use that as my prior year and roll forward from that date. So what I'm going to do, just as you would be doing at the moment with the uh, the tax return modules, you'll be under the tasks and tax returns uh, tab, and you'll just hit the add option. Now under this event type, you'll have in bold one of the uh, system defined events or compliance tasks up at the top here. One of them is going to be year and accounts. Now I'm sure at the moment, if you're using the corporation tax module as a standalone or a, the self-assessment tax return uh, product as a standalone, you'll just be going straight into corporation tax return or straight into uh, individual tax return if you're selecting an individual. Now, if you're using our accounts production module, you won't actually ever have to use that. You'll be going straight into the set of year and accounts and then you can get to the tax return from the year and accounts summary. So we start to see the integration coming. So if I select year and accounts, now for me, it's automatically picked up my accounting period there and that's because I'm rolling it forward from this prior year. If it's your first year of trading, it's nice and simple. You can just choose from the calendar drop down. Now all I'm going to want to do here is click view and edit year and accounts. And that's going to open up my year and accounts summary. So it's going to take all that relevant information from the details tab. And importantly, this is where we're going to pick up the accounts production template. Now for me, it selected the right one there for me, which is the FRS 102. But I've got other templates available as here as well. So if you've got a larger company, you've got the FRS 102. If you've got a slightly smaller company, a micro entity, then obviously you're going to be going for the FRS 105. If you need to add accountants reports, you've got the facility to do so there. And there's options for audited and abridged accounts as well. So we're just going to say this is a fairly simple FRS 10218 and we're going to open up the year and accounts. And that's going to take us straight into the year and accounts module. Now, upon entering the year and accounts, it's going to give us a quick notification there saying, are we sure we want to roll forward the trial balance from the prior year? To which we'll say yes. And then we're presented with a cover page with a set of accounts. Now, over in this table of contents on the left hand side, we have the different pages of the reports. You can see at the moment we're selecting the accounts cover. But we've got other other pages here, profit and loss and our balance sheet. And if we scroll down to extended trial balance, and we can just move this over to the side by hovering over here. 
If I scroll across to the right hand side, you can see that where we've rolled forward from the prior year, my prior year comparatives have entered into column J. So it's now up for me to get my original trial balance column figures into column C or the current year. Now using accounts production, there's so many different ways that you can build up this extended trial balance. So you can find out which way is gonna work for you depending on the type of information you get from your clients, whether it just be uh, bank receipts, statements, whether it be spreadsheets, it might be a bookkeeping package or so on. So I'm gonna go through and highlight all of the different ways that you can build up this extended trial balance. So we're gonna start with probably the simplest but uh, slowest way is you can manually key the figures directly in. Now, if you've got quite a simple client or um, you're used to doing this, then this is gonna be perfect for you, is to manually key the figures directly against BTC Software's descriptors. Another option that you do have is through the use of journals. So you can choose the drop downs for the ledgers and the accounts, and then you'll have debits and credits. So if you use the debits and credits, um, by all means, you can build up the extended trial balance this way through the use of journals. Another option is, uh, which we've touched on in the presentation, is the incomplete records module. So this is kind of like a mini bookkeeping package. Um, you can start by adding a bank account, including uh, whether it be a current account, if you can have multiple bank accounts, it might be a petty cash account. Um, and then you can log your payments and receipts directly into here. So you've got an option for opening balances up at the top if you want to bring those through. And if you're used to working with nominal codes, you can change our set of nominal codes and descriptions to the ones that suit you so that you can go in and you can type those nominal codes that you're used to and build up the extended trial balance through the use of incomplete records. So you'd be logging the payments and receipts in here. You can match it against the bank and reconcile it against the bank and the cash book. And then you can export that entire thing directly into the extended trial balance and that will fill out all of these, uh, these boxes here. And then finally, what tends to be the most popular method is the trial balance import, which you can see just here. And that's where we're importing from a bookkeeping package or we're choosing the custom option at the bottom there to import via a CSV file specifically used for uh, the spreadsheets. So providing that you save your spreadsheet as a CSV file, you'd be able to import that into uh, the extended trial balance and that will save you a lot of time because when you roll forward into the following year it's going to remember all of that mapping it's going to remember all of your codes and your descriptions that you've listed in the spreadsheet till eventually you'll get to the point where you'll import your spreadsheet everything's already mapped and then you can click import and all the figures are going to go into the extended trial balance with a click of a button so you're not having to retype any figures in now there are four online bookkeeping packages here that we work with specifically. So we've got Xero, Reckon One, QuickBooks Online, and Free Agent. And the integration that we have with those, um, as opposed to all the others being a CSV file, which you can extract directly out of the software, for example, Sage, I've got the option to download. And that will actually allow me to log into the bookkeeping package directly from within BTC software. So I'm, I'm just gonna log in here. And then what we can do is we can allow access for 30 minutes. So essentially what we're doing here is we're creating a token so that we don't have to keep logging in every action that we take throughout the software. We get access for 30 minutes exactly. So we're gonna allow access, click yes to import, and then it's gonna take us straight into the mapping screen. So it doesn't matter who you import from, whether it's uh, Xero, it could be QuickBooks, it could be Free Agent, uh, Spreadsheets, whoever, you're gonna to get to this exact same looking mapping screen. The only thing that's gonna differ here are these codes or IDs and descriptions as to where these codes and descriptions are coming from. Now I'm using a, a zero trial balance. So in this case, these are zero codes and zero descriptions. But if you're using Sage or Spreadsheets or QuickBooks or Reckon One or whoever, then you would have their IDs and their descriptions listed here. And then of course you've got the values. And what you're doing here is you're mapping zero codes and descriptions to BTC software's ledgers and accounts so that all these values are gonna go into the correct boxes when we click import. Now this kind of works in like a traffic light system would and it's successfully mapped these ones in green. When you import for the first time, what you might see is the software will attempt to guess the ledgers and accounts in yellow and you can simply just tick them off if they're correct or change them by selecting the drop down. 
And then the ones in red, it's really nice and simple. You're just manually mapping those. But when I say manually, all you're really doing is choosing an option from the drop down. So for example, we've got uh, legal and professional fees there. So we're gonna drop down into administrative expenses and then just find the right expense. In this case, other legal and professional costs. And now when we roll forward into the following year or any future years, um, when legal and professional fees comes up, that will automatically be mapped because we've mapped it in this year and it will remember that going forward. So I'm just gonna map these last ones off here. And if you can imagine now we roll forward into the following year and we don't actually introduce any new IDs or descriptions, when we download and log into Xero and upload our, our trial balance, we'll get a complete green trial balance mapping screen where we've mapped them all in the prior years and then we'll be able to import with the click of a button. So I'm gonna choose yes to import and there we go. You can see there's our figures into the original trial balance column or into column C there. Now simply what we can do, at the moment we've got loads of boxes here with no numerical value. So there is a tool to combat that. If I go up to the top here and go to collapse empty data, that I just get rid of the uh, unnecessary sales or the sales that I'm not particularly using in this example and give me a much uh, nicer, kind of more restricted view of the extended trial balance. Now one thing that you might want to do, especially if you're um, importing a trial balance directly from the client is you might want to make some adjustments. Now the easiest way to make some adjustments is via the use of journals. So I'm going to show you that now. We're just going to call this journal one and I'm going to choose, we're just going to choose an administrative expense as a simple example. So I'm going to choose um, something that's come in from my extended trial balance from my trial balance. So we'll go for telephone. So we're going to debit £100 out of telephone and then we're going to stick it in, uh, let's be a bit biased, we'll stick it in software. So there we go. So we're removing £100 out of the telephone and we're sticking it in software and you can see where we've imported the TB from zero, it's picked up the zero codes here and it will do dependent on what type of uh, import that you've done. If you're using QuickBooks, it will come up with QuickBooks codes, Sage, Sage codes and so on. So there's a very, very simple adjustment. Now, all I'm gonna do is just click save and close, choose okay, and my journal adjustment is just gonna pop into column D there. So it's nice and away from the original trial balance column so that you can see it clearly. And you can have multiple entries under one journal, or you can have multiple journals and push everything from column E over to the right hand side. Now, what I can do with this journal, now that I've made that adjustment, is I'm actually able to get that back out into the bookkeeping package with the two-way bookkeeping integration that we offer. So if I go to print up at the top left here, and I can produce a report as well, which will show me a list of all my journals, but I can go to journal export, select export. Now for me, it's gonna recognize that we've logged into zero for 30 minutes, so it's gonna choose zero automatically. So I just choose upload and update, and that, that journal without having to leave BTC software, we've not even got zero open. That is now in zero. Now, if we do want to view that, we just click yes. And what it's going to do is it's going to open up zero within my uh, default web browser. And I can log in. And there we go. So you can see there's my journal and there's my timestamp at the bottom there. So we've got to this point where we've um, imported our details. Now, if you want to change any of these descriptors, the option is available for you to do that. There's a few different ways that you can do it. Either you can turn the protection off over here, unenable the protection, 
and then you can go in and change these details like you would just with a, a spreadsheet by just clicking on here and then changing it within the formula bar another option that you do have which I did mention in the, uh, the presentation is to go to administration report and template design and accounts production templates within there you can take one of our existing templates like a FRS 102 or a partnership template or a charity template clone it and then make those changes that you want to in the clone template and then publish that template so that way every time you want those changes to appear then you would select that bespoke customized template that you've just created same goes with notes to the accounts if you want to change the notes to the accounts then obviously you can do you can right click on any of the notes to the accounts and you can you've got options to collapse them as well or uncollapse if you've hidden any um, and want to unhide them where we've entered all the figures into the extended trial balance you can see they've all pulled through into the balance sheet and our profit and loss so that actually all that's left for us to do now is to assign that associated individual for the signing so this is why we said that the associated individual is really important to include because then they won't appear from this drop down so you would need to include them so that they can appear from the drop down and then of course after the first year that will roll forward until obviously you want to maybe want to change the person that's going to be signing off the accounts so that's the accounts finished at this stage now all we're going to do is check the accounts and generate the IX URL file that's going to look for any warning or error messages that are found within the software and importantly produce that all important IX URL file now as I do this it's a good chance to explain the difference between a warning as an, and an error message I've got a great example of a warning so I've deliberately missed the page numbering here for the contents page and that's a great example of a warning which is something that could be overridden because a warning actually won't affect the final submission so with page numbering, companies house aren't worried about the page numbering on the accounts when you send them off, but that will obviously affect the aesthetics of the accounts when you send them to the client. So although it's uh, important and it's gonna show as a warning, it's not actually vital for the submission, therefore we can override it. So for the sake of this video, I am go going to override the warnings. And following that, we should get a nice message just say the year and accounts were checked, there we go, and the IX URL file generated successfully. So all I'm going to do is just click OK and then we're going to come out of here and we're back out into the year and accounts summary. So before where we opened up the year and accounts and we selected our template, now that we've got some figures in there, we're now able to open up the CT return. Opening up the CT return will give us a second summary, so it's one that you're probably uh, used to or familiar with. And from within here, we can open up the CT comp and CT 600. Now what we'll see is that all the figures that we've added into the extended trial balance, this is where we're starting to see the integration now, will pull through into the corporation tax module, into my adjustment of profits, which is my add backs and deductions. And if I go to corporation tax calculation, you can see it's already worked out my chargeable figure. So really that all that's left for me to do in here is cover off any losses, supplementary schedules, um, like R&D, property pages, or any capital allowances. So this is a really advanced template. There isn't much this uh, this software couldn't cover. Um, really, if anything at all, you've got all the capital allowances for AIA, you've got R&D, property pages, capital allowances, uh, capital gains, sorry, as well. And then all these specialist CT600 forms. So if you've got loans to participators, directors, uh, we've got charity uh, forms in here as well. So it's completely covered. Now, if we say this is a fairly simple uh, corporation tax return, all I'm going to do is, for the first year, just add in these details. So I'm going to add in the name of my director and the status. And following that, what we're going to do is we're going to click this check and generate button, so similar as we had with the accounts, and it's going to post this corporation tax chargeable figure back to the accounts automatically. So you can see the two-way integration. I've built up the extended chart balance. It's pulled all the figures into the corporation tax return. And now within the corporation tax return, I can post the figure back to the account. So it's two way. So if I check the return and generate the ITS Burrell file, it's going to work that out for us. There we go. So you can see it says it's checked and generated successfully so that I choose the small X to come out of the corporation tax module, go back to our accounts, open them up.
drop into extended child balance and if I go to journals there it is alongside the journal that we created earlier so I can post the corporation tax figure back to the account so it's specific or particularly uh, advantageous if you're a online bookkeeping uh, user you're not having to go back to the bookkeeping package and manually type that in and you're not having to go back to the accounts and manually type this in it's bringing it in directly from corporation tax modules so you can see there's our figure there so that all we have to do is just check and generate a final time now that we've got that figure in there we're going to override the warnings for the sake of the demonstration and that's our accounts finished so you can see it's as simple as that there's so many different ways that you can build this up dependent on the type of information that you get from your clients so you can use different methods for for different clients it's extremely flexible and then you've got the full integration there with the tax modules as well so that is our accounts completely finished so now what we can do is we've always got the option to print them and view them and if you want to create a draft copy uh, there's a draft watermark that's available as well but we're going to choose this option here now so we're going to choose send to client for review and that's going to allow us to produce the report sent to our client so at the moment it's choosing the full set of accounts and we can choose any of these backing pages if we want to as I mentioned if you want to create a draft copy you can um, but if we create the report it's going to give us a different option so we've got the integration there with my DocSafe and DocuSign for your e-signing and portals um, so you can send it through a secure portal directly to the client you've got options to email save as a PDF print we're going to show you a preview here in terms of what they look like now within practice management this is where you can um, include your company logo signature um, introduce database tags to include any specific information that you want to appear on the covering letter so this is our covering letter here and then we're going to scroll through through the different pages so we've got our our balance sheet here or our director's report sorry and then the uh, the profit and loss and then we'll have the balance sheet and if you want to change the the font the sizing have a play around with colors other bits and pieces the accounts production is really flexible and allows you to uh, to change or amend any of those we come on to the notes the accounts and then finally at the bottom we'll have the detail profit and loss and that'll be our last two pages now where we sent that to the client for review you'll notice that the status which was currently in progress has just changed to with client for review so that we know that's now been sent to the client so it's a useful way of uh, a kind of a, a glance knowing that that particular report is with the client that you're waiting to hear back from them another way that you can track that is through the different reports that we offer I won't go into too much detail on those but if you are interested in those do check out the practice management videos but let's say we've sent that to the client they've signed it they've sent it back to us they're happy for us to submit we can then go ahead and submit to company's house so all we do is just choose the option to submit we tick the tick box to confirm that we've got the authority from the client to submit it will always default to the filleted set of accounts unless unless you want to send the full accounts but in most occasions you will just want to send the filleted accounts you can submit the filleted accounts to company's house and it will go directly from our software so just like you've got with the tax returns at the moment the options menu there's an options for company's house details and that will take you directly to the company's house filing uh, credentials which you can enter into the software here so that you'll be able to file with the click of a button now for the tax return all that we do is simply open up the CT comp and CT 600 and we just press this one here check it, the return and generate the IXPRL file which is automatically going to attach the latest set of accounts that we've produced in the IXPRL format to the CT 600 so it's in that mandatory format for HMRC when we file so we're not having to worry about IXBRL tagging or anything like that the software does it automatically for you and now we've got the accounts and the corporation tax together we can send a client for review for the corporation tax return or we could have done the whole thing within the year in accounts but if I just submit to HMRC we're going to confirm we've got authority and then submit And there we go so that's a demonstration of the accounts production the integration that we have with the tax modules specifically we looked at the integration with corporation tax but of course you've got the integration with um, self-assessment practice management individual tax returns 
and obviously you've got charity accounts as well. So if, even if you do have charities, uh, we've got a number of videos, specifically a 15 minute one that I'm thinking of, which is on our YouTube channel. If you get in touch with us, we can send you a link to that, or it's fairly easy to find if you type in uh, youtube.com slash BTC software, you'll be able to find the, uh, the charity accounts module as well. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tap back out into the presentation now. I've got another few slides just to show you before we close off the video. Now to look at the integration, we did touch on this. These are the uh, the bookkeeping packages that we do integrate with. We've got Zero, Reckon One, Sage, Free Agent, and QuickBooks. So we saw the integration with Zero there, um, and you have got YouTube videos covering the other um, bookkeeping packages and the integration that we have with those as well. So do make sure you check those out if you're using uh, any of those other online bookkeeping packages. And the four key takeaways from today's video is that you can integrate your tax and account software. Um, you're keeping everything under the one roof. You're not having to uh, use external software. You're not having to install other modules, worry about upgrading something else and upgrading BTC software. Everything's under the one roof and everything integrates. So you've got a one-stop shop for all of your compliance needs. You've got one provider for all of your software compliance. It can easily be added to your product set or your current subscription. If you are even interested in a, a trial of the software, which is the last point there, uh, we can add it onto your license for seven days. You can have a play around with it, see if you like it. Um, and then following that, if you're on a subscription to BTC software, we can add it to your subscription and it will come out of the next month's payment. Or um, we can add it onto your existing annual set. Or we can do it kind of pro rata and line it up with your, your renewal dates if you want to do that as well. So if you are interested or if you've got any questions, um, you're more than welcome to contact us. Um, that's the new business sales team there. Um, so you can cover, uh, you can contact Tom, Tim or myself. Uh, Tom's in Reykjavik there, Tim's in New York and then there's me um, looking like an Ed Sheeran lookalike uh, on a golf course there. Looking very happy to be there. <laughs> and um, you can contact us via the, uh, the telephone number there or you can contact us via the email address sales at BTC Software. Thank you very much for joining me on this video. Any questions, just let us know. Finn.